When I tell you I had a great childhood, I really did. My siblings, we really loved each other. We were closely bonded. And when mom was working as a businesswoman in Kingston, we made sure to commute. Daddy was a farmer. We lived in St. Thomas, Duckins Fields, St. Thomas, where we went to church every Sunday. I was a good little girl, going to Sunday school and celebrating all the usual markers in the church. At some point, we moved from St. Thomas to St. Catherine. At age 17, things happened in my parents' marriage, and this idyllic picture of my childhood was just crushed. My mom, she started seeing another gentleman and wanted a divorce. By this time, my father had been living overseas. The farming hadn't taken and he had gone to the States to try and make something of himself. So we had moved to Kingston. As the oldest sibling in the home, my older sister had married and moved away. My mom started to confide in me. I became a place she laid her burdens. I crumbled inside. When I tell you, I was a shell of the happy-go-lucky young teenager I used to be. I love my mommy. I look in the mirror and I see her. I love her to the ground. But I didn't share anything with anyone else. I took on the pain, guilt, and condemnation of the what-ifs of our family. What's going to happen when my father finds out? What's going to happen when my siblings find out? When mommy's sister saw what was happening to me, she said, I need to take Nikki with me. She was talking about her Tuesday afternoon prayer meeting. I was working at the time, yet every Tuesday, I would be there. Of course, I would go to church and see people who said they loved Jesus. My mother went every Sunday, said she loved Jesus, but she didn't live like she did. She didn't live according to the word of God. The people of that denomination, I just thought were such huge hypocrites. But this place, this place I went to on a Tuesday, I saw something so different. I saw people that really wanted to live according to what his word said and wanted to live holy. And I said, I want what they have. I need what they have. At that point, I truly invited Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. I got not water baptized right away at age 17, but with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of his presence, speaking in another tongue. I tell you, before my baptism, it was like having the rabbit ears on the black and white TV that would fuzz and fuzz. But after, I just started seeing everything in high definition color. And I was like, I've got to get more of this Jesus. Not long after that, my parents did get a divorce. But I had a path that the Lord had for me that was clearly defined now. I got married at the age of 25. Before my marriage, I didn't know what addiction was. When I tell you, the first four years of my marriage were torture. No matter what I did. I had two daughters by then who I just adore. My husband, whom I adored, happened to be a, a systems manager, a programmer. You know, one plus one equals two, A then B then C. None of my life was making sense. My sweet husband was using drugs. He was using cocaine. Cocaine was his drug of choice. It caused quite an upset in our family. They would speak Jamaican veranda talk. But I said, you don't know the God I serve. I have to press into God because there is a name that is higher than any other name. And at the name of Jesus, cocaine has to bow. So I had faith and trust in God that this thing was going to bow in Jesus' name. He started to go to the AA, NA, the Alcoholic Anonymous Narcotics Anonymous meetings. And I had started going to the Family of Addicts, Al-Anon meetings. I had taken what I could, but thought, just for today, I need to get some space. It was too toxic. 
So I took the girls and went to my mom's house for two weeks. While I was there, the Lord spoke to me and said, go home, I will make it right. So I returned on the 21st of August, my daughter's birthday. While I was away for two weeks, he, my husband, showered me with love. When I tell you, cards every other day. So I returned on the 21st of August, my daughter's birthday. We celebrated her sweet birthday together. My husband was so thrilled we were home. He was elated. I knew that he deeply loved and valued our family, but I could see him setting himself up in his head. The next time I use, I'm going to lose him for good. The next time I use, I'm going to lose him for good. The enemy can come in and tell you lies. And he was believing these lies. I could just see what was going to happen. He believed the lies. And because of the fear of losing his family again, having lost both of his parents at a very young age, that night he went out to use. But when I tell you I had a peace, it was a peace that surpassed all understanding. He came back at I don't know, maybe four o'clock in the morning and knocked on the bedroom door and said, what are you going to do? You have your bag packed? I said, it is not for me to do anything. It is for you and God to figure this out. I closed the door and went to sleep. By September 18, he had used his last time and ended up in rehab in Montego Bay. He was there for four weeks. It cost like 30,000 Jamaican dollars. Back then, that was a lot of money. I didn't have money to pay for it. Every bit of money I thought was a nest egg gone up his nose. I'm having to pay rent, pay the light bill, school fees. I didn't have it. But there was a trust in God that was unshakable. I would get phone calls during those four weeks from friends of his parents who had passed away and my friends. Nikki, I hear Simon is in rehab, getting himself sorted out. Here is a check. Here is a check. Here is a check. Everything was covered. Every need was met. You know that scripture in Philippians 4, 6 to 9? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart that scripture listen to me that scripture was my lifeline i had had a picture of what my husband would look like without drugs but at the end of the four weeks the individual god gave me at the end far surpassed that he does exceedingly and abundantly above all we could think hope and imagine the husband he restored to me was phenomenal and he has been amazing. We have not looked back. It has been over 31 years ago. He's been free all that time.